Hey everybody, so welcome to the new set for doing um, whiteboard videos. Um, yeah, so that's how it's going to look. Um, it's funny sometimes, I'm trying to do this video pretty much all afternoon. I mean, right now it's almost 8 o'clock, I've been trying to do this since 4, 3.30 I actually think. I've done, I think, 7 takes uh, to the point where uh, it just doesn't seem to want to come out or... I forget when I pause, I forget to restart. I do a really good, I did two really good takes. So if this is lousy, I did two really good takes earlier. Okay, so this video is about the uh, top 15 uh, Montreal Canadiens draft picks since the year 2000. I'm not including the last three seasons because it's too early to tell on people. Uh, basically, it's Ryan Paley. No, I shouldn't say that. Those are the best from there. Um, but it, there's a lot of guys like Ryan Paling, just Barry Kokanami, that, you know, you might want to judge. But it's too early in their careers, and I don't want to call them busts because they're not. And uh, we don't know um, how good they're going to be or what they're going to do. So, it's um, the rest of them <laughs> I'm judging. There's been a lot of uh, picks. Not as many good ones as I would like to see. And there were a few years there where they weren't drafting very well. Only in the last couple of years where they're really drafting well. And um, these are the top 15 that I thought... Should be in this list. Number 15 from 2003. Maxim Lapierre. Now, I remember when Max came to Montreal, when he was drafted, we had higher hopes for him as far as what his um, offensive output would be. But he turned out to be hes a good fourth-line player. And it comes to mind somebody that we had here last year, Nate Thompson kind of in that mold. Um, so a fourth liner, and uh, he was drafted. Let me give you his numbers. Second round, 61st overall. He is a center, played 614 games, 65 goals, 74 assists for 139 points. And there you can see why I'm talking about very much like uh, Nate Thompson stats and definitely a good, solid fourth liner. So Maxim Lapierre, just we always hope, I always thought he would do a little bit more. Um Next up, number 14. There you go, better lighting. I forgot. It's getting dark. It's starting to get dark outside. It's affecting my lighting. Okay. Next up at number 14 from 2002 is Chris Higgins. Another player that um, I was expecting a little more from. He's a kid that grew up in Montreal Canadiens, American. I don't remember where he's from. New York, I think. And... Um, very happy to be here and be drafted by Montreal to make the team. And a decent hockey player, but we were hoping for a top six forward out of him. I really think Chris Higgins was more of a third line uh, player. I'll give you his numbers. First of all, drafted first round, 14th overall. 711 games played, 165 goals, 168 assists, which is really nice and balanced for 333 points, and um, just always expected a little more from Higgins, but I mean, the kind of player I liked, just you get frustrated with players like that, that just, you just want a little bit more from them. So that's number 14. Number 13 from 2000, a big defenseman that we had really high hopes for, like Mike Komisarek, same kind of hopes, big defenseman that we thought would be big, tough, and all that. And that's uh, Ron Hainsey. Ron Hainsey. Uh, still playing as of last season or this season that just hasn't finished yet. Uh, so he's played 1,132 games. First of all, he was drafted first round, 13th overall. Um, 59 goals, 252 assists for 311 points. That's decent numbers for a defenseman. Not a top four defenseman, I don't think. Maybe second, third pairing. And, um, yeah, um, we had a lot of hopes for this guy. But um, decent pick. Um, next up, number from 2016. Guy that we traded, I don't think he might have played a few games here, but he didn't play that many. Um, that is um, Mikhail Sergachev. Now, Sergachev is kind of a defenseman we could have really used here, traded him to get. Um, Jonathan Drua. I'm not. I'm still not going to judge that trade yet because Drua didn't get that full opportunity for a full year to show us 
if he can play like the first 19 games all season. If the uh, season does get restarted, maybe we'll get an opportunity to see if he can continue that. And until he starts to play again and we see what kind of player he's going to be, um, it's still up in the air. Uh, but it would have been nice to have Sergachev here. He was picked in the first round, ninth overall. He's played 227 games, 25 goals, 81 assists for 106 points. I believe Tampa, not that they're ba they were baby babying him, but bringing him along slowly enough so that not too much pressure. They've got Victor Hedman there anyway and a couple other good defensemen. So um, he's turning into a really solid top four defenseman. Uh, number 11 from 2003. Another guy that I'm going to say was a little underperforming in his time here, and that's Andre Kostitsin. Good player, had good potential, could score some goals. I think he had 30 one year. And uh, I think it's the Montreal nightlife and all that that got to him. He was the kind of guy that would be susceptible to that, like to party, all that kind of stuff. Have a sort of personal story about it, so I... I know it's true. Him and his brother, when they were here, Montreal's that kind of city where you could, if you really like the nightlife, you can, you're going to really enjoy Montreal. So, um, but he was a good player. Um, just again, another frustrating guy that you know. Once he hit, scored 30 goals one year, you figure out oh, this guy's goal score. We're going to see that. What a great pick! And he just, it never, it never materialized. Uh, first round, tenth overall, 398 games. 103 goals, 119 assists, for 222 points, and I'd say a disappointment, but still a good pick because you know, they didn't make a lot of good picks back in those days. Next up, a current player from uh, drafted in 2016. I'm probably going to take a little bit of flack over this one because I think a lot of people might disagree with me, and that is number 53, Victor Mete. I like Victor Mete. He's a young defenseman. He's got a lot of potential still. Got great wheels, can skate like the wind. Um, his problem is his size. He's a little small. He needs to work on, um, I guess, strengthening the upper body so he can do better at uh, fighting along, battling along the boards, especially in the defensive zone and in front of the net, clearing the net. Um, keeping people away from price. That's where I think he needs to work on. He needs to work a little bit on his offense. He might not be a big offensive guy, but he'll be. A, I think he'll be a little better than he's been um, showing so far. And um, I like him, though. He's young. He's got a lot of potential still, and I hope they hang on to him. Next up, number nine uh, from 2013, a guy that, again, frustrates us offensively, but on the defensive side, excellent, excellent player. And that's Arturi Lekkonen. Arturi Lekkonen plays the 200-foot game. He needs a little bit of work on uh, the offensive side. And only in that, he has trouble, and no pun intended, finishing, because he's a finish player. Um, he gets to the net. He sneaks there sometimes where you... How did he get there? You don't know. He gets in there. He's a very intelligent player, and he just needs to finish the... Uh, you know, score that goal, get that tip in, get the get a shot on net, those kind of things. But a very intelligent player, great on both sides of the ice. Uh, just needs a little work on the offensive side. He was picked in the second round, 55th overall. He's a left wing, two, 291 games so far. Very balanced, 54 goals, 53 assists for 107 points. We'd like to see those goals go up. He, he has a lot of promise. He looks like he can score. 20, 25 goals, and he just doesn't. Uh, but on the other side of the puck, he is. I think you need to hang on to this guy. I hope he doesn't get traded. From 2007, and in number eight spot, a guy that I don't think played any games here in Montreal. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Uh, he was traded away way too early. Um, Ryan McDonough. So not only was he traded away, we didn't really get a shot at seeing him in, here in Montreal, but they got Scott Gomez for him. Bob Gainey's maybe worst trade, if not his worst, right up there. And um, he went on to, to captain the New York Rangers. He's with Tampa Bay right now. But, I mean, this is a quality uh, defenseman that, if I mean, we might still have him here. Uh, first round, 12th overall, 661 games so far. 63 goals, 235 assists, 4, 298 points. Um, 
Jeez, wouldn't it be nice to have Ryan McDonough and not have had Scott Gomez? <laughs> Pinch me. I'd love to have that be happening. In number seventh place um, from 2003, a guy that I'm kind of hoping they might go after in the offseason to back up Carey Price once again for the second time in, his, in their careers. That's Yarrow Halak. Yarrow Halak, drafted in the ninth round, 271st overall, 520 wins uh, games, 272 wins, 167 losses, and 58 overtime or shootout losses. Uh, 50 shutouts, 248 goals against, and a 916 save percentage. Really solid numbers. And the guy that he backed up when he was here, uh, or competed for the starting job when he was here, is in the is on the list, obviously. And um, you'd be surprised at the numbers, how close they are. How after all these years, they ended up very similar numbers, except in wins losses. But anyways, you'll see in a second. Next up. <laughs> Uh, for a number six spot from 2001, a guy that played his thousandth game here in Montreal. Um, I'm probably spelling that wrong, but it's fine. Thomas Placanic. Thomas Placanic. Placanic, Placanics, however you want to say it. Um, was drafted in the third round, 71st overall in 2001. 233 goals. 375 assists, 608 points in 1,001 games, almost all of them here in Montreal, except for the little bit he played after the trading deadline trade to Toronto, of all teams. Um, Thomas Placanic started out here a little shaky in his beginning of his career. I remember after one playoff game where he played not great, and he was telling reporters how he played like a girl, and he was all embarrassed, and we used to make fun of him about that. But then he became a really solid uh, center. Remember one year he had 60 points, and um, he was a very hard center to play against for the top line of the other team. In other words, you know, like a Philip Deneau now, and that um, just a great player here at Montreal. Turned out into a really great player. Next up, number five from 2007. 2007 was a good draft year for Montreal. Um, guy we traded away to get Tatar and Suzuki, and that is Max. Pacioretty, our former captain. I think Max being named captain was probably a mistake. I don't think he had the personality for it. I don't think that was his thing to be captain of the Montreal Canadiens, and I don't think it did him any good. Um, a guy who's a very streaky goal scorer, he'll get you 35 or more point, goals every year, but he's going to frustrate you doing it. Uh, usually a slow starter. Um, to get um, goals anyway, beginning of the season, but then he put he'll, like he'll be like, "Wow, when is Max going to start scoring?" And then there's five goals in three games, boom, and that kind of a score, very streaky. Great player, uh, really liked Max. First round pick and twenty uh, second overall. He has played seven hundred and sixty three games so far, two hundred and eighty goals, two hundred and seventy four assists, very well balanced. 554 points. I mean, what can you say about Max Pacioretty? Just a really good goal scorer. Next up, a guy that was picked after him, but in the same draft, 2007. Um, I think that's, the, and also the guy that was kind of in the running for captain, other than Brendan Gallagher. And I don't think PK was ever going to get captain, but PK Subban, a really good defenseman, especially here in Montreal, won the Norris Trophy in the strike short in the season that he played. Um, played his best hockey here in Montreal. Probably uh, regrets, well, I'm sure he regrets being traded. Not his fault he was traded, but um, really good guy. His career is kind of on the wane right now because I think, I personally, I think his mind, his brain isn't really fully 100% into hockey. He needs to get that to happen for him to get back to the level that he was, I think, in my opinion. But a really great guy, still works with the charities, comes back to Montreal, sees all the kids in the hospital. Really great guy that way. Can't say anything bad about him. Um, although I think Brendan Gallagher would, because I don't think they like each other. Second round, 43rd overall, 713 games, 105 goals, 321 assists for 426 points. Um, 
yeah, just a really good guy. My favorite player when he was here. And, um, yeah, I love, I love P.K. Subban. Next up, number three. Like I said, guy who didn't like him. <laughs> From the 2010 draft, a uh, guy who was drafted in the fifth round. And I am going to do a redraft of that draft. And I'm going to put him in the first round because he definitely deserves that. And that's Brandon Gallagher. Gallagher, great draft pick, especially out of the fifth round. Wow. I know he was small. That's probably why they didn't pick him in the first. Yeah, I get that. But um, great pick by Montreal. So like I said, fifth round, 147th overall. He has played 547 games, 173 goals, 161 assists for 334 points. Uh, the heart and soul of the team. Um, if um, Shea Weber retires anytime soon, Galley's going to be the next captain. I think that's for sure. Love that guy. Can't say anything bad about Brendan Gallagher. He's even turning out to be, in all of this, putting out videos on TikTok. And guy is good. Can act and sing and all that kind of stuff. Surprised the hell out of me. Brendan Gallagher. Just love him. Next one up is a guy that when he was drafted, I had never heard of him. He was an older player and drafted late. And I just figured, well, whatever. And he turned out to be a really good player. And that's Mark Streit. Not sure what year that was. What year is he drafted? In 2004. Ninth round, 262nd overall. He played 786 games in his career. 96 goals, 338 assists for 434 points. Like I said, drafted, I think, maybe he was 26, 27, something like that. So very late in his career. Um, captained his uh, country's uh, international team. Captained the New York Islanders after he left Montreal. Um, turned out to be a really, really good defenseman. I had never heard of him before. I just like out of the blue, he was drafted. I don't remember who it was. Was that Ganey that drafted him, I guess? And um, turned out great. Number one draft pick. Um, that they've ever made. I guess it's kind of obvious because I said his name would be here and it's not on the board yet. Uh, that's our current goalie and um, most people's favorite player, if not tied with Brendan Gallagher, and that's <laughs> Carey Price. Carey Price, drafted 2005, uh, fifth overall. Yep, um, that was the year um, Sidney Crosby was drafted. 682 games, 348 wins, 250 losses, 74 overtime or shootout losses. Now, remember I said he had very similar stats to Yarrow Halak, and this is where it is. Halak had 50 shutouts, Carey Price 48. Halak 248 goals, uh, 2.48 goals against. Price 2.49. 2 uh, Price 917 save percentage to Halak's 916 save percentage. Imagine that two guys battling back in, I forget what year it was that they were battling, 2010 or something. Anyways, whatever year it was, they were battling to see who would be the starter. Uh, I was a price guy. Uh, a lot of people I know were Halak guys. I, I was a price guy the whole way. And um, to see that their stats, excluding wins and losses and games played, uh, so similar, it's, it's kind of funny. And I kind of hope, because he's a UFA um at the end of this season, if it ever finishes, he's a UFA. I hope Montreal can sign him and Boston not re-sign him. I'd like to see Halak be the backup that they bring in here. He's solid. He's dependable. You know what you're getting when you get Yarrow Halak. So that's uh, that's my list. Um, if you like it, give a thumbs up the video. And um, uh, let me know what you think about uh, the, the guys I picked. Who would you change on the board if you change anybody? So who would you change and um, who would you put in their place? And that in the comment section below. And while you're down there, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, ring that notifications bell. That's going to get your, your daily fix of Blue Blonde Rouge right here at Talking Halves. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Please stay safe. Wash your hands a lot. Stay home as much as you can. When you do have to go out, wear a mask. I am going to put out a new mask video with a special lining to show you how to do that and sew it, and that's coming up in the next few days. Um, please wear one of those. Stay safe. Peace out, y'all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.